Hey there, this is Dave Ward from Catch Up Studios, and in this tutorial we'll just show you a little improvements um, to the character that we made in the last one. If you're not interested in this, you can skip straight to the uh, next tutorial and we'll look at different concepts. So, um, as a little recap, uh, we've got a character object which has got a sprite render attached to it, which shows this um, image, peasant one. We've got an animator, which has an animation inside it which will run through and play as a walk animation and we've got a character walk script that will move our character off the left hand side of the screen. So what happens if we have multiple characters on the screen? Okay. Um, at the minute if we had five of these and they're all animated separately it would take five draw calls um, to draw a separate image for each one of these characters. Which is not really ideal so what we're going to look at is putting these six images into one big image called a sprite sheet, meaning that we could just draw parts of this image and it will only be one draw call for every character we have on the screen. You can create a sprite sheet by hand and add all your images into one big PNG, uh, but it's a bit, a bit long-winded and a bit of a pain to maintain. So instead I use this piece of software called Texture Packer. Um, and if you download Texture Packer, open it up, you can add a smart folder which will contain all your um, sprites. So if here in our project we add the sprites folder, it will take each one of these images and pack them as closely as it can onto one um, big PNG with alpha. So I've got a 1024 by 1024 image here. Um, you want to make sure the data format is a Unity Texture 2D sprite sheet. And then if you publish a sprite sheet, It'll ask you where you want to save it and what you want to save it as. We'll create a new folder called uh, Sprite Sheets and save it in here as character. So if you jump back into Unity, you can see that we've got our um, character PNG, which has the six individual sprites inside it, and a TPS sheet, which contains information about where those six sprites are on that one PNG. Um, at the minute, if you were just to assign this to a character, it would display all six at once. Um, so you need this plugin um, from Texture Packer, which is called Texture Packer Importer. Import that. Possibly remove the examples if you don't want them. And this will import a DLL into your project, which um, will look at any um, PNGs which have an associated sprite sheet and break them down into the sprites, individual sprites. So if you were to re-import inside the sprite sheets folder, um, you can see that it's broken this one image now down into six individual sprites. So what we can do with this is we can um, assign into our character animation um, these sprites from the sprite sheet. So let's delete our original one so we don't get them confused. and start reassigning them. First to the sprite render itself on the game object and then inside the animator. And now I've assigned all those sprites, if I click play you'll see the same behaviour as before, but it's rendering all from one image. That's a good thing because it means we can have as many characters on the screen as we want and it would only be one draw call for all those characters, which is cool. And there's one more easy thing that we could do here to avoid a common pitfall. So if we look at our character moving across the screen, it's going at the pace it would probably want, which is right. But let's say our frame rate was dropped to 10 frames a second. He's not going the pace that we thought he would. Frame rate can often be outside of your control, like if you're running on a device that's not as powerful as the what you're anticipating. So really you should um, factor that in into your script. So if we jump back to um, our character walk script, as you can see in our update function, we're translating minus 0.05 units, no matter what happens. So if this is called once every frame, um, and it's called 60 frames in a second, we'll move 60 times this in one second. But if it's only called 10 frames in a second, we'll just move 10 times this amount in one second. So that's not good. You need to um, factor in the amount of time since the last frame, the amount of time in between frames. And in Unity that's called uh, time.delta time. So 
we multiply that by the speed we want, which now is probably going to be something like uh, minus, minus 2, and run it again, at 60 frames a second we've still got the speed we expect, and at 10 frames a second we have that same speed, despite the animation being choppy, which you can't really control. So what we've looked at there is reducing your draw calls using sprite sheets and factoring in um, the variation in frame rate that you can encounter by running on different devices and how you can get around that. If you stick around for the next tutorial, we'll break our character down into individual components so you can animate his hands, legs, head separately. We'll show you how easy that is to do.